Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Life West Leadership Line. I'm Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life West, and I'm excited to have you with us today. I've got a very close friend of mine. I've known him for about 30 something years. Um, great chiropractor, both him and his wife, uh, Dr. Kevin Jackson. Welcome, Kevin. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Can and, I take uh, my glasses off too? I don't. You look you like <laughs> you look like Clark Kent to Superman. I can't even touch that, man. Well, yeah. You know, I uh, I just looked at you and I thought I can't compete with Ron. I got to take my glasses uh, off. And, uh, I let, let, me tell, let me tell our viewers that that you know Kevin graduated in 1989 from Life University. Met his wife, Dr. Selena Sigapus at the time, now Sigapus Jackson. Uh, uh, at Life, they went back up to Pennsylvania, where where Dr. Selena was from. Kevin's a, he's a Canadian. Go Canada, and he's uh, from Niagara Falls. Canada. So he's right at that Buffalo border, big hockey player, big athlete, but a very strong chiropractor with a phenomenal practice. And he's also getting into research, which we're going to touch on today too, because he's got some really cool things around research, but uh, we've got a lot to go over. So Kevin, let's, let's just kind of look at it and just kind of move in. I mean, you, you left life, right? You're down at life. You met Selena and you just jumped in and you guys went to, went to Pennsylvania, right? And started practicing. That is almost correct. What we did, we went to um, Venice, Florida first for a year because, oh, cool. so, yeah, because uh, her dad, uh, Jim Sigafus, lived in Florida. She wanted her, he wanted her with him. And so he opened up her practice. I opened up my own practice in Sarasota after about a year after one of his uh, seminars called The Gathering. I had an uh, epiphany where I'd like to be with my wife. That's why I got married with her. <laughs> And I said, uh, I want to leave uh, Florida. I'm going to go to somewhere in the north because I'm from the north and I like how the north operates. So and uh, so we picked Pennsylvania. And um, so yeah. I, I sold my practice, moved up and then she eventually moved up. And it was a little point of contention for a while. But uh, I'll tell you, students, you have to follow your dreams. You can't let someone pick your dreams for you. So that's one of my first messages. Go where your heart is and you'll always be happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And our docs, but this is mostly going to doctors, but I got to tell you something. It's interesting because, you know, you, you know, got this vision at, at, at your father-in-law's event, at which he could never go against since it happened at his event, right? It's kind of like him giving you an adjustment and you having this epiphany and going, oh, thank you. I've got to move, right? It's a good yeah, lesson yeah. for me, right? Having, you know, <laughs> being a being a father of three daughters. But so that's how you got up there. I know you guys have a rocking practice. You know, you see close to a thousand visits a week, but but you're also doing a phenomenal job. You do very technical work. Absolutely. And, and, and delivering really high quality care. Um, you know, you're a recent grandfather. You've got a lot of really cool things happen in your life. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you guys grew up under the shadow of, of Jim Sigafus, you know, and, and for, you know, anyone who's watching this who doesn't, uh, know Jim of Jim, heard Jim speak, or um, go on YouTube and just Google Jim Sigafus, Dr. Jim Sigafus, and listen to a few of his uh, his videos that might be on there. But um, you know, Kevin, you kind of you guys broke away and you came to Pennsylvania and you just really set up this phenomenal stuff. You know, what would you attribute you know the keys to your success? Well. As you know, um, we attended the DE seminars and we were able to understand what the philosophy of chiropractic is. And, um, you know, to us, philosophy is like a set of principles that you put into practice. And when you put these principles into practice, they produce for you. For an example, if you if you make a specific adjustment, people are going to get well. If you educate people about the philosophy of chiropractic and they actually understand it, they will in turn, um, become better patients because of it, because of it, there's, you know, those are just simple principles. Sig once said that, um, you know, it's unprincipled for a principal chiropractor not to be successful because if you apply this stuff, it becomes so easy. And, you know, when we didn't have to do all the gimmicks and all the dinners and all these crazy things that sometimes you see out there from a marketing standpoint, but it's just, just really clean cut, um, philosophy and, um, and, and, I would say the best way of describing it is, is just technique. Cause if you have a technique that delivers the goods, there's really no marketing needed. If people get well in your office, they get well. Yeah. And it's just a really great thing. And yeah. you know, that we're bl blessed to be under that situation. I know you were too. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it would just been easy for us, thankfully. 
Yeah. And you know what a lot of it is? I mean, it's really, and I don't know if it's easy at any time because there's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot, we take on a lot, you know, when we're working with patients and the more patients you see, you mm -hmm. take on a lot. There's a lot that goes on in the, in the, in the other world, so to speak, besides just what it looks like on the outside. But yeah. when you talked about the principle, you know, I think it's, I think we can boil it down to owning what you do. I mean, really owning exactly. what you do, exactly. you know, and having that confidence you know, not the fake stuff, not the, oh yeah, no, no, no. The confidence that, you know, when you correct a subluxation, you know, that the body is going to heal, whatever that healing looks like is up to, it's not between us and our patient, right? But the right. body's going to function better, right? Yeah. Physiology is such a beautiful thing to work with. And, and if you apply, uh, you know, a correct adjustment and you just leave it and let the adjustment, let the body do what it needs to do. What a beautiful thing. And it's, it's just sometimes a lost uh, art and a lost science. And, uh, and that's why I'm so glad about Life West because it really is reviving that technical part of it, that philosophical part of it, that scientific part of it, you know, and, and hats off to, to Life West because of that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we always said it's a three legged stool, right? You know, yeah. you cut one of those legs short, you're going to have a wobbly stool, right? And it's really about making sure that we own what we own on a science level, on an art level, and on a philosophical level, right? But but it's so interesting because, you know, you came from Canada, right? How'd you get into chiropractic? Well, I, um, when I was up in Canada, hockey, I worked right? at... So, something with that? hockey? Something with hockey? Or, you know, or <laughs> I played studying? hockey, I played rugby, I wrestled, you know, I got punched out a lot by, you know, other people. But uh, basically, my, my, my way, uh, my avenue of getting to chiropractic is this, is I was working at a gas station uh, in high school. And um, I had a cold that wouldn't go away. And I went on antibiotics at the um, advice of my family doctor. And I ended up in the hospital with a um, anaphylactic shock type thing. Mm -hmm. After I got out of the hospital, I was just failing to, you know, regain where I was before. And the family chiropractor said, look at to my dad, bring in your son, let's get him adjusted. Let's see if that makes a difference with him. You know, he didn't make any false claims. He didn't say that chiropractic uh, does this or does that. He just said, let's just see what it does for him. So I started getting adjusted regularly and, and you know, really made a huge difference in my recovery. But not only that, it really made a huge difference in my athletic performance. And uh, it was just something that really resonated truthfully with me it was like wow this really makes a huge difference for me and so I, I right from there I went to um, university and I took my prerequisites and I eventually went down to life because they had a rugby team mm -hmm. but uh, make long story short it was just I, I had that experience and a lot of times you know students nowadays may not get that but um, since that point forward I always had this 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 uh, belief system that if you if you get adjusted, your body's going to perform better. I, I've lived it, and I can tell it to patients. And uh, it's a simple story, yeah. but by golly, it really worked for me, and it's it's worked for everybody I've come in contact so far. Yeah, and well, it works for the human body, right? When we're free of nerve interference, we're going to function at a better yeah. level than if we have nerve interference. Very simple. It really is. It really is. I remember we. I remember back in the uh, '80s. Um, we brought uh, Herbert Ross Reber to California and it might've been the nineties, early nineties or late eighties. And we brought Herbert Ross Reber and he talked about that when they got out of school, someone asked him a question. We, he, we interviewed him for on stage for about an hour. And then we had two microphones lined up and doctors and students were there. And there were just a thousand people in the audience. They were just firing questions. And one guy, I believe it was a student got up and said, well, how did you do it? Like in the twenties or thirties, how did you teach? People grow a practice or teach people about chiropractic, you know, and what he said, Kevin, was really interesting. He said, and it's always stuck with me since then. He said, you know, when we got out of school, we were just so excited to tell the world about innate intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's when you think about that statement, they weren't telling people about headaches, neck pain, back pain, fricks and strains, oh, right. which we do wonderful things with. Right. But they yeah. were so excited to tell the world about that there's a healing power within you called innate intelligence. And this innate intelligence is what animates you and runs you. And when that innate intelligence, you know, is getting to every part of your body through your nervous system, you will be healthier, whatever that means, but you will be healthier, you know? And I mean, that's keeping it simple, right? Oh my gosh. That is, if, if someone said to me, Kevin, what is it that made your practice so successful over all these years? We do a doctor's report. And basically, the only message that we want to get across is exactly what you just said. As long as the person leaves our office and they have a new idea that their body is self-healing, 
that it's done through the nervous system and they just take that idea with them. That's it. We're not trying to change their thoughts on, on, um, on, on medicine or politics or vaccines. You know, our main thing is that person doesn't matter what walk of life they come from. If they left just shaking their head, just like you are, you're just shaking your head, acknowledging that, Hey, there is a, a, a power in this body, a body, the body self heals. It has this ability to self heal. That is the message right there. And that's how simple this whole thing can be. And it, you know, you know, when I say simple, sure, we go to the office. You've been in your office for many years and you grind away and it's, it's very laborious. There's nothing simple about it, but it's a simple message. And uh, by golly, the, 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 BJ Palmer was right. If you just keep it simple, I mean, very simple. Yeah. Sometimes we get so into um, explaining different things like diet, exercise, and how that's going to affect a person. It, the person leaves with multiple philosophical ideas of how they're going to get well. But if they if they leave your office with that just that one message that their body is self healing through the nervous system, my gosh, what a what a what a beautiful way to leave an office, and it gives a person hope. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it brings me it brings me to. Um... Gosh, there's that saying that goes, and I've, and I've used this, I, I resonate with this so much that when you, when you can say to someone, you know, your body has the, the ability to heal, your body's ability to heal is far greater than you were ever led to believe. Really? And people have to attach on, you know, it's kind of like when you tell someone, you know, you've got the ability to do this and you were ever led to believe or ever told about, you know, and then they go, well, tell me about it. Right. And, you know, right. and that's when we can start going into, you know, the physiology or whatever, someone, whoever you're talking to, whatever resonates. But like you said, just keeping it simple and having that go, you know, well, you know what? The philosophy does build it, you know, because it keeps us going. It's our why, obviously. But then there's also the science, you know, and I do want to share with the audience, um, you know, that and I, I mentioned at the beginning that you're doing a lot of scientific research right now. In fact, you've been kind of like on something that's been that me and you have been talking about pretty extensively, probably for the last three months or so, whatever time period it's been. Um, and you're actually wearing it on your T-shirt today, the exoskeleton. Let's talk about what you're doing, you know, because not, not many people know about it. And, um, and I'm going to put the website down below, they can go see about it, because I think this is going to be a really beautiful thing. And, and share with us what you've been doing with exoskeleton. Well, I'll give you a quick overview. When I played rugby at life, I got into a collision. And um, I get, went head to head with something, someone and I, I ended up with a concussion. And, um, of course, being at the chiropractic school, I got an upper cervical adjustment and the concussion symptoms went away. From that point forward, I always understood about concussion and the upper cervical area. And it really bothered me because there is no work being done at all anywhere, except by chiropractors who see people who have concussions and they adjust them. But there's no preventative equipment. There's no talk about it in the NFL. And that's how the whole idea came about is we came up with this idea that uh, we attach these um, strategically placed rubber bands between a helmet and a shoulder pad system. And what it does, it actually creates like a super strong set of uh, SCM muscles mm -hmm. and it slows down the acceleration of the head, which slows down the acceleration of the brain, the spinal cord. Um, it takes a shearing force off the blood vessels, off the soft tissue. So essentially what it does is it protects a person who is playing contact sports. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how the whole thing was developed. And set. You know, when you look at that, oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is. I love it. See, it says Life West on it. <laughs> we'll tell people about that in a second. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get them. But basically, that's, that's what the unit looks like. And we've kept it a secret for obvious reasons. I mean, it's something that we're, we're working on, we're building. And, um, of course, you were um, gracious enough to bring it on board to the Life West team. And um, so there's a whole bunch of research that goes into something like this. It's not just a, you know, a, a set of straps that you set on. There's there's all kinds of testing. Well, that what I done. love. Yeah. What I love about it, man, because I think that the football players should love it because it just looks like dreadlocks coming down. You know, I mean, it's something I've always wanted. You know, I've never been able to have dreads. Uh, you know, it just looks so cool. And if you can pick your colors and pick your whatever, and and those straps, actually, I know they're strategically placed, and there's all kinds of tensile strength to them, but they go into the shoulder pads, right? And then that is it just, that is and, correct, and it reduces the axial compression, right, of the forces that are happening, which, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it, it reduces the extension, you know, with these hyperflexion extension injuries, lateral movement, rotational movements, and, and basically it slows down the velocity from a hit. Yeah. 
So basically head speed, you know, impacts of when two uh, forces come together, there's going to be a resultant um, force created that's called angular acceleration. So what angular acceleration does is it puts a, like a, a shearing force into the brain and the spinal cord and the, and the spine itself. And it's really detrimental. So what happens in a laboratory setting, when you take this helmet and you put it on one of those crash dummies and you have sensors in it, that it reduces that force at about 27%, which is really statistically significant. And that's something that you can, you know, obviously it should carry over from the laboratory onto the field. That's what we're going to be checking, of course, with the Life West project. Right, right. I'll tell you something very interesting. I want to say maybe three years ago at the Wave, um, that's our yearly you know program that Life West puts on every August. One of our keynote speakers was Dr. Bennett Amalu. And right. If, if our viewers don't know Bennett Amalu. He's the guy that Will Smith played in the movie Concussion. He's the guy who coined the term CTE, right? You know, what football players and the brain starts, you know, starts basically dying off. And, and the cool thing about Dr. Amalu was, um, you know, we, he, did, he gave this great talk. We did these interviews afterwards. People were asking questions. We had scientists in a very small room, you know, people from Dr. Jerry Klum was there, thought it was one of the best talks he's ever heard. And then we got to just be with this guy to Heidi Havek, to other people were there. And, um, you know, one of the things he said was that the NFL at that time, at least, they weren't into, they didn't want to even admit to CTE because if they did, they'd be liable for so many years and so much other stuff. I mean, they're, they've come around since then and they understand it, especially after people like Junior Seau and other people who have donated their, uh, you know, just recently Vincent Jackson, um, you know, found dead in a hotel room in Florida and his family had, already, you know, donated the brain to, I don't know, to a college up in the, up in the New England area to look at, um, it's like, and this is what he was doing. And it was just crazy. He was in Philadelphia, but the stuff that he talked about, and I love what you're doing with this. And I just want our audience to know this because with the angular acceleration, what Kevin has going on right now is he's got the uh, San, Jose, San Jose State University football team. And I believe they're one of the top 20 teams in the country, or they were, right. you know, um, and they're, and, and they're going to be working with the helmet during their spring and summer practices, right? Their preseason practices. Right. And what Life West is looking to do is doing research with this and, and, and working with them. And we're just in the, in the talks right now, right? Of doing that. Correct. And, you know, um, the uh, Amalu studies showed the pathological changes in the brain. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you went down to the brain stem and the level of the uh, atlas and the occiput and C2, but this is the thing that Life West has turned us on to is that it's going to be an upper cervical study. Anytime there's any impact into the brain, it's going to accelerate all that tissue and there's going to be force put into and, and, uh, uh, Cellular, cellular changes at the level of the brainstem. And we're going to start identifying those, but we're going to make it a pilot project and, and, and a landmark study that chiropractors can be in charge of this because it's, it's something that no one has really looked at. And it's, it's probably one of the most important things, just a, a, an important um, differentiation here is it takes about 96 g's of force to make the brain shift inside the skull it takes about five g's of force to put a torsion or shift or a concussive force into the brain stem area at the level of the occiput and c1 and c2 and that's why this has become so important and that's you know we're doing nothing but taking the chiropractic message that when there's an insult to the uh, nervous system it's going to create some physiological changes and by golly we're going to we're going to look into that we got these, um, and as you mentioned, Ron, you were gracious enough to start looking into getting the standing MRI done uh, pre and post. And it, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. We might have Dr. Rosa on board. So hey, I, I, I'm going to share this with our audience. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I don't know how long, maybe it was four weeks ago. We have a phone call, uh, a, a Zoom call on a Saturday morning. I've got Kevin in Pennsylvania. I've got Scott Rosa in upstate New York, by Syracuse area of New York. And then I've got Jeff Shulton and Jeff, and, and Jeff Shulton in Calgary. And the four of us have this conversation that was like, you know, I, I 15 minutes in, I finally said, well, I should be taping this. And I turned the recorder on, right? 
I mean, the stuff that was coming down in that conversation was incredible. Both Scott and Jeff are like experts of the, of the, you know, of the cranial cervical joint. Um, you know, the, the, the things that, that Scott is doing, you know, with the, with the video fluoroscopy MRIs and all that stuff and working on all these, you know, on Jim McMahon and these ex football players. And then, the thing that that that's that uh, that Jeff Shulton is doing, you know, he's a head of NUCA. He was the president of the Upper Cervical, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Association for the ICA, and just doing all kinds of research and things like this. It's just, Kevin, it was an amazing conversation, and when we see the results of this, it's going to be just just amazing. You know, um, we know this happens. We know that concussive forces affect the brain, but no one is talking about the brainstem. No one's talking about cerebral spinal fluid bathing the brain. Nobody's talking about all these things that happen, you know, and, and let's not even talk about football now, you know, football, we know, but what about just a yeah, regular car accident or kid, kid falls or repetitive falls or whatever it might be, or even a, a terrible fall. We just kind of always just say, Oh, you bumped your head, but really what's it doing, you know? You know, and that's, that's the power of what this study is going to prove with life West is that, it's the subconcussive hits that are actually the issue. It, yeah, everybody understands that when you take a big shot to the head or you fall off your bike, or you get a soccer ball in the head, there's going to be trouble. But what is the impact of this repetitive subconcussive, you know, trauma to that area? And, and by doing the MRIs and the brain studies with the, uh, the WEVI equipment, um, doing some accelerometer um, type studies, it's just going to show that it's important across all sports. It's important across all ways of living. If there, if there's trauma, if there's uh, micro traumas, it's going to have an effect on the brainstem. Yes. Yes. And you know what I think is important. I think it's important for our viewers to know that, you know, one of the things we're doing as we're looking at this, what Kevin talked about this, this new technology that we have at life West called uh, Wavi and, and it's, it's brain mapping. So we can put a helmet on people and they and it's got electrodes and we can test their brain and test them for all kinds of different things around that and then we're going to be doing these pre and post that's what our plan is with san jose state with their football players doing a pre and post whether we do it every week or every two weeks or whatever we'll have a control control group wearing the exoskeleton and another control group not wearing it doing all these tests and then looking at and then with mris and other things and looking at the upper cervical joint and the forces that are going on. So we're actually going from the brain down to the, you know, to the, to the cervical spine and be able to see this. It's, it's going to be amazing. You know, it really is. And um, I, I want to bring up somebody because you, I kind of have a new best friend, you know, <laughs> you know who I'm going to talk about. Oh yeah. Yeah. So there's this really phenomenal woman. She's a neurophysiologist out of UCLA uh, PhD, just phenomenal researcher. Kevin, I'll let you introduce Dr. Kristen because I just met her. We had a wonderful talk. She's actually going to be one of our keynote speakers now at the wave coming up this August. And, um, and she's just so cool. So just, just introduce her. She, I'm actually going to get her on. The, I'm making you a commitment. And Dr. Kristen, if you're watching this, you're going to be on uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm going to get you on this show. So, so Kevin, share about Dr. Kristen. Someone who I knew from a nutritional company introduced me to Dr. Kristen. She didn't know me from anybody. Um, they explained to her what I was working on. And she took the time out of her busy schedule. I mean, this is a, um, you know, one of the, the most renowned neuroscientists uh, in the United States. And uh, she uh, took the time to listen to what I had to say. She was um, um, polite enough to uh, encourage me in different ways of, of approaching my project. Uh, eventually, I mean, this is the person who, who has um, um, authored 55 different uh, jur um, journals, um, um, uh, manuscripts that are uh, published in peer-reviewed journals. Uh, she has over 400 scientific citations. Um, she's written books. She's on TV programs. She's like a superstar in the uh, in the in the neurophysiology field. So uh, she even wrote this uh, my paper for me. I'll put that. I mean, that's my biggest accomplishment right there. And she was the one who wrote it for me. But the deal is this: is that she is the most wonderful person inside and out and she'll bend over backwards and she is chiropractic up one side and down the other. She goes to her chiropractor regularly has for 30 plus years, nicest person on the planet, planet smartest person you'll ever run into. And she's willing to do um, 
what it needs to be done for chiropractic, for research, anything that makes a person function better. That's all she really cares about. She, she doesn't do it for the accolades anymore at this point. She's a beautiful person. You, you, you met her, Ron, inside and out. She's great. And, and, and for just for our viewers, uh, it's Dr. Um, Kristen, I, I hope I don't, uh, Willemere, right? Is that how you pronounce it? That is it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, spelling it for me is very difficult. She is amazing, <laughs> but she wrote a book that's called Biohack Your Brain, right? How to Boost Cognitive. Um, if you just go on Amazon and look up Biohack Your Brain in, in the book section, it'll pop up. Um, she is just, she really is. She's just incredible. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and it's so cool when we go to outside sources, right? Who are well renowned in the world of, you know, brain physiology and brain function and all these kinds of things who are actually just so involved and so passionate about projects like that and about chiropractic, like you said. So I want to thank yeah. you for that connection because it was just, it was really neat. I mean, we just had a really great conversation. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She, like I said, she is an absolute blessing to me. She's going to be an absolute blessing to the profession. And uh, she has a singleness of purpose where she just wants to help people. She's, she's like one of us. She yeah. just wants to help people. And um, it's, it's amazing. So it's going to, she's going to be a blessing to life West. And the, I predict the whole chiropractic profession. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I, and in fact, I think after she speaks at the wave, she is going to be very well known in the chiropractic profession, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's yeah. so cool. You know, Kevin, it's interesting because, you know, what you're doing with the exoskeleton with your research, it's kind of like you just had a thought about it and you decided to move on it. I think it's a really good lesson for all of us, you know, like to follow our dream, right? Follow our passion. It doesn't mean you have to go away from what you do, correct? You're still practicing. You're Absolutely. Still, still doing everything you're doing. But it's like you just have this vision to, to, to really see how this works and, and, and help people in brain health and in, in, uh, in brain stem health. And I think it's a good lesson for all of us that when we start to get an idea or something comes in, move with it. You know, life's too short to hold on to those ideas. And then on, our, you know, on, the, on the final resting bed, we go, oh, I wish I should have, I could have, or, you know, if I only took the time to write that book or to do that stuff, you know, whatever it is, it's like, I just really want to tell our viewers, move on it. You know, you got great ideas. And when that innate voice speaks, when that internal voice speaks to you, right? About maybe it's a book you want to write. Maybe it's a movie you want to script out. Maybe it's doing research, whatever it is, please move on it. Because, you know, that's how these ideas are born, right? Dr. Sid, you talk about DE, used to teach us that, you know, dreams are seeds of future deeds, and if God would never have dreamt, the world would never have been born, right? And that was his quote, you know, but yeah. he took that from somewhere else. So please work from that, you know, for all of us. We're just going to make the world a better place. Kevin, we're starting to wind down. These, these shows go really quick, but I do want to ask you one thing. I, I, you, know, you know, you've been in this game for 30-something years, right? 31 years. Well, actually, yeah, 89, 32 years. You're in your 32nd year. Um, where do you, you know... You, where do you see chiropractic? Where do you see it going? You know, what's your vision or what do you see happening in the future with chiropractic? Here's what I see happening with chiropractic is currently it's divided. There's two sides to the aisle. Some chiropractors that um, practice kind of like a physical therapy type model, uh, more of a medical model. Then you have your um, principled chiropractors who practice the principle of chiropractic. Okay. The straight chiropractors. But um, I think what's happened here is, is you're going to find that the principle of chiropractic is so true and it's growing just smoldering amongst the three schools that really promote it and schools in, in some of the schools in Europe. But my, my, my thought is this, is that you're going to see an explosion in people who are science-based, principle-based, and practice-based all right. And you're going to find that you don't have to do a lot of marketing. You don't have to do a lot of coaching. It all comes from within and that there's going to be a resurgence, sort of like the old DE days where people went to DE and they learned about the principle and they would go home and just apply it. And they would take care of tons of people. Tons of people got well. And as a result, they made a very good living. And it was a very gratifying thing to do. Um, insurance coverage, whether it comes or it goes, doesn't really matter because you can always do very well for yourself. Um, not 
not under the insurance umbrella. And the quicker that we can let that go, the more that we're going to flourish. So I, I see us as a really vibrant um, profession with all kinds of people getting renewed um, spirits as, as want to be principled chiropractors. That's just the way I feel. I might be in a bubble of all the people that I know, but everybody that I know who's a principled chiropractor really does well for themselves and they do well for the people that are in their lives as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, when, I, when I hear that and I, you know, I mean, that resonates with me. And what I really see too, also along those same lines is that the more that we start letting people know when, when I talk principle like that, like, you know, it doesn't mean what your technique is or anything like that. It's really more about what we talk about. The, we'll circle this back to the beginning that the mm-hmm. body is a self healing, self regulating right. organism. Right. And if people work from that standpoint, whatever they do to apply that is their thing. Right. But it's really working from that level of, you know, this is what chiropractors do. And, and, and I think that's one of our, that, and I love what you said, because, you know, really what's going on right now, you can go to a hundred different chiropractors and get a hundred different stories on what mm-hmm. chiropractic is. Right. And what chiropractic is, doesn't change the application of chiropractic. So if we kept the story of dentistry, everyone knows you go to a general dentist, you know, but they might have different techniques of how they do things and use different instrumentation diagnostic procedures, but there, you still know why you're going. Right. And I think that's what I see happening along with what you talked about, where we come right. together and we just agree on, this is what chiropractic is. How you apply that is how you apply that. Right. Yeah. We can find a common ground on the principle. Yeah. And you're still right. I mean, practice takes on so many different looks and, and, and so many different techniques and so many different business models. So where that stuff you know, that's there. I mean, people are going to do their own thing, but the, the commonality, of course, is the principle. And it's so strong and it's so true and it works every time. And um, it's just nice to have a school at the forefront of, of, you know, research that is just, you know, proving more and more how important that that whole concept is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and more schools are doing it and it's going to keep growing. You know, you talk about Europe, Adrian Wenbaum's a very close friend of mine and he's at Barcelona College and you know, we're doing some HRV research with them. And then you've got um, New Zealand College, you know, down in uh, uh, Phil McMaster, very close friend of mine, president down there. And Heidi Havoc has the research institute at, at New Zealand College. And so there's there's really good stuff going on. We're going to see a lot of le- up leveling, you know, as we're moving with this research. And it's one thing we haven't had because, you know, financially, we don't get NIH NIH grants and, you know, right. we're not Harvard and Yale and Stanford and these kind of places that get, you know, $350 million to do their research, but, but it's coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. And we just have to see that happen and collectively, you know, come together on that. Cause you know, our profession is very powerful when we all work together. You know, I can honestly say this. I have at any one time, I have um, probably six or seven CAs that are young young women that work in the office and majority of them go on to be chiropractors or at least attempt to go to chiropractic school. And it's a really interesting concept for young women. For some reason, the whole chiropractic message is, you know, they're nurturers, women, and, and they just love the whole idea of that the body heals itself and you can take a baby and adjust them and have them flourish. And um, I, I just, I can, I, you know, that's what I see. I, there's probably right now at my office, there's, four people, including Chloe, that are going to chiropractic school soon. And so it's, it's, I just see that. And I didn't see that about 10 years ago. It was, it was kids were coming in and they were like into physical therapy, which is great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with physical therapy, but we're chiropractors and we're talking about chiropractic. But when people understand that principle, my goodness gracious, it just is exciting for them. So yeah, what a, I, what a great thing to attach on to, you know, and, and just, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for our viewers, you know, right now, probably in our profession, in, in the schools right now, we're very close. It's 50-50, you know, for male and female. When I went to school, it was probably 90-10. When my wife right. went to school, it was 80-20 at the most. Yeah. Maybe it was maybe it was 85, you know, 15, I don't know, for male to female. So it's so cool. And and you you nailed it. You know, of course, we both have wives that practice. And, you know, I've got three daughters that are chiropractors. You are going, you know, Chloe's going to be going to school. Um, but it's, it's, I feel that women are the healers of the world. Like you said, they're the nurturers, right? You know, right. they bring, they bring life into the world, you know, by birthing. Right. And, you know, that's not their motive to, you know, men are, you know, bang, 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 pull the trigger, fight the war, you know, kind of stuff like that. We're just a different vibe and a vibration. I think chiropractic is moving with that. But Kevin, thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. 
Um, it's always great to see you, whether it's on Zoom, hopefully in person pretty soon. You know, at the, I know you'll be out here in August at the Wave, uh, but I'm just so thrilled that we got the time to be able to sit today and chat. And, and uh, for our viewers, I hope you just are able to take this in because there's so much that was said in this very brief conversation. Um, we already flashed on the screen for, for, for Kevin's website, uh, uh, jacksonathletic.com. It's already been there. Go check out and see what he's doing with his exoskeleton stuff. It's pretty amazing. You'll see the videos that are on there. And then, uh, you know, we have his office that I already flashed on. So just check and see what he's doing. You can always drop him a line. And uh, if there's anything that you see that you might want to help with or, or contribute to for the research, um, uh, Kevin, we'll put your email uh, down also. They can reach you through Jackson Athletic, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, just yeah. do that. And uh, and uh, until we meet again, I just want to wish you a blessed day and and keep hugging those people around you. And remember that, uh, like we said earlier, that you know there's no better power than the power that's within the body. That's the healing power within us that we all have. And keep touching into that and letting people know that they do have the ability to heal. And it's far greater than they were most likely ever taught. So until we come at you again, thank you. And I'll bid you adieu until... Uh, until our next leadership line. See you later. Kevin, thank you. Thank Love you. you. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you, man. Thank you.